All right, here's some questions that uh, deal with exponents, um, scientific notation, and then uh, um, some order of operations. So the first question asks you to write an equivalent expression without a negative exponent. So anytime you have a negative exponent, you can change it to the other side of the fraction and make it positive. So this one, uh, this is like 6 to the minus 5 over 1. I could also imagine that there's a 1 times out here. And so I can take this and move it to the bottom of the fraction. And I can do that up top, the 1 stays. And on the bottom, there'd be 6 to the positive 5. Okay. Um, now, just if you were to have something like this, if you'd had, say, 1 over x to the minus 2, again, you could take this and move it to the top and make it 1 times x to the positive 2, or simply x squared. Okay, so that's the answer for our first one, 1 over 6 to the fifth. The next one says simplify. I think to simplify, they're just wanting us to um, use the uh, power of a quotient. So I'm going to raise everything inside the brackets to that exponent of 8. So it'll be y to the 8th over x to the 8th. Next one, they're multiplying common bases. Uh, that's sort of the multiplication principle for exponents. And if you're multiplying common bases, you get to add their exponents. So this would be the same as w to the minus 8 plus a negative 8. If you do that on your calculator, minus 8 plus a negative 8, or minus 8 minus 8, you'll come up both ways to minus 16. Oh, and then in the question it says only use positive exponents. Well, we learned that rule up here. So that would be 1 over w to the positive 16. Okay, scientific notation. Uh, scientific notation, just an easy way to write very big numbers or very small numbers. Um, so this one here, it's a very small number, and, and rather than having to worry about all those zeros and just how small that is, I can rewrite it so there, that there will be a decimal place after the first non-zero number. So it's, the, the decimal place is going to wind up right there. So it'll be 8.16 times 10, and then I tell you how many times that I had to move the decimal place to get there. So how many times did I have to multiply by 10? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this would be minus 4. The way I remember that it's a minus is if it's a small number, it's going to be minus. If it's a big number, like this one down here, um, it's positive, and so you'd move the other way. Okay, here's one. It's a negative 5, so it means it's a very small number. So which way do you think you're going to have to move that decimal place? Hopefully you said to the left. So let me just rewrite the number again, 9.14 times 10 to the minus 5. So this tells me I have to move my decimal place five places to the left. So it starts here, it'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, decimal place and ends there, and then I add a 0 for however many spots I had to move. And so I would rewrite it as 0 0.00009. Notice the decimal place moves. It doesn't stay in its original spot. And also numbers that have decimal places in them like this, typically we like to put a zero up front. Uh, that's just sort of becoming standard. Okay, so that would be my answer for that one, 0 0.00009149914. Next, it's a positive 6, the exponent, so it means it's a big number. So I have to move the decimal which way do you think to make a big number? Hopefully you said right. So I have to move it right six places. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So the decimal place wind up right there, and I'm going to have to add one, two, three zeros in. So my number will be two, five, three, one, zero, zero, zero. So 2.531 times 10 to the sixth is the same as 2,531,000. Okay, here's some questions where you have to simplify. Now, this is order of operation stuff. Fortunately, we have calculators like decimals that I have here on the side that'll do all of this for us. But it's, it's a good idea to know what the rules are. Rules are multiply, divide, or first is brackets, if you have any, uh, then uh, exponents, if you have any, and then divide or multiply, whichever comes first, 
and then add or subtract, whichever comes first. In this first one, there's a multiply here, so I have to do that first. So I'm leaving 16 minus 2 times 13 would be 26, take away 8. Again, I've got two takeaways. I always like to do the first one first. So 16 take away 26 would be a negative 10 minus 8. Negative 10 minus 8, that's going to be a minus 18. Now let me just show you how you can use decimals to help you out with that. So in decimals, you just type it out exactly as, it's, as it shows. So 16 uh, take away 2 times 13 uh, minus 8. Minus 18. Done. Okay, let's maybe do try the one below there. So go backward. There's a little uh, X button in the bottom right there that you can press just above the Enter button. Okay, so next one. 3 times 2 minus 4 times 2 squared, 2 squared, that's a little a squared button. Okay, 2 squared plus uh, 6 bracket 3 minus 1, 3 take away 1 bracket. They get positive 2, decimals does. Let's us try it and see if we come up with the same thing. Okay, so um, I need to do brackets first, so that would be this part right there. 3 take away 1 is 2, so it would be 6 times 2. And I'm just going to write everything else as it sits. Okay, then it says exponents before you do anything else. So 2 squared is 4, so this is 4 plus 6 times 2 times 4 minus 2, 3. There. Notice I'm just doing one operation every time. Okay, so um, we have brackets, then exponents, divide or multiply, whichever comes first, add or subtract, whichever comes first. I've done these first two. Now I'm looking for divide or multiply, whichever comes first. Here's the times right there. 3 times 2 is 6. Take away 4 times 4 plus 6 times 2. Uh, next one, oh, there's a multiply right there. So 4 times 4 is 16. Let's write, rewrite everything else as it sits. The more you do of these, the more you can see which ones you can do at the same time. But it's not a bad idea, not a bad practice, just to do one thing at a time. Okay, here's another multiply. 6 times 2, that would be 12. So I have 6 take away 16 plus 12. Now, which do I do first, the subtract or the add? It's whichever comes first. So in Bedmas, the A comes first, but the addition and subtraction have the same priority. So it's whichever comes first. Okay, so um, I need to do this subtract first. So 6 take away 16 is a minus 10 plus 12. And you're down 10, you gain 12, you'd be up 2. That's the same thing that decimals told us. Okay, a couple more. Here's one. Uh, again, uh, let me just do it. You can try decimals if you want or on your calculator. Decimals seems to work real well. Uh, there's no brackets, no exponents, so I'm doing this divide first, then that divide, then this times. So 15 divided 5 is 3, times 12, divide 6, times 256. I think I might have said the wrong order there. Okay, now they're all I have left are divide and times. And so I do this one first. 3 times 12 is 36. Write everything else down. 36 divided 6 would be 6 times 256, and then whatever 6 times 256 is. I guess I have decimals here. Uh, whoops, let me try it. Come on, decimals. Okay, I'll just do the whole thing. 15, divide 5. I should have made it bigger. Oh, it's interesting how they do the divide 5. Now there's arrows to help you move over if things aren't uh, lining up the way they should. So 15 divided 5, got it, times 12, yeah. Oh, divide 6, divide 6, oh, it's putting it down there, nice. 15 divided 5 times 12, divide 6, times 256, times 256. Uh-oh, I spelled 256 wrong. 
there. 1536. So my answer, 1536. I'm just going to test that. Times 6. 36, 3, 30, 33, 3, 12, or 3 is 50. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Okay, last. Simplify that expression. Oh, that looks sort of fun. I'm going to do this at bracket first. So 7 take away 5 is 2. So I'll have 5 times 2 cubed minus 8 times 5 plus 4 times 5 all over. Uh, oh, 8 cubed, that's an exponent. 8 cubed, 64 times 8, 64 times 8, 32, 3, 5, 12. So it'll be 5, 12 plus, oh, the same thing, 5, 12. Okay, good. Um, now I have to do that exponent here. So 2 cubed, I think, is 8. So this would be 5 times 8. Take away 8 times 5 plus 4 times 5 all over. If I add those two, two together on the bottom, I'll get 1024. Okay. Now, um, 5 times 8 is 40. Minus 8 times 5, that's another 40. Plus 4 times 5 is 20. Notice I just, I just did this multiplication, that multiplication, that multiplication. I knew I'd have to do them eventually anyway. So all over 1024, 40 is equals 40 is 0, plus 20 is, would be 20 over 1024. Now you can probably divide those. Uh, 2 goes into 2010. 2 goes into 1024, 512. I think 2 will go again on that one. It'll be 5, and 2 into that is 256. So I think my answer I'd come up with is 5 over 256. Oh, but the question wants us to round to the nearest thousand. So I would divide those two and see what it comes out to. Let me try decimals and see uh, uh, what it comes to. Okay, Let's see if we can do this here. Now, if I have something, a whole bunch of stuff on the top, divided by something on the bottom, typically in decimals it's nice to put a bracket in. Just to say, I'm start. This is the top, okay? So it'll be five, and then bracket another bracket. Seven take away five. Bracket uh, cubed. So that's the A B one. And you have to put a three there, and then I'm going to go over. So far, so good. Minus eight times five plus. 4 times 5, okay, and my bracket, so that's the whole numerator, then I hit divide, nice, and then 8 to the third um, over plus 8 to the third, there we go, so my answer when I did all that stuff on the bottom, should have been 0 0.019531.25. And what I have on the bottom there, 5 over 256. Let's just test it and see. 5 over 256. 5 divided to 6. Ah! 256. Same number came out to the same thing. All right, hopefully that helps you with that exponent section. It also deals with scientific notation and a bit of order of operations.